Hello and welcome to chapter 5, Disease and Disease Producing Organisms. We're only going to deal with a bit of this unit, more the microbiology of it. Um, all the in information on disease and how you get disease and the types of diseases, that will be covered in your patho course. I wanted to deal mainly with the microbiology of it. This is where it's important you look at the unit C plan because the unit C plan will outline that we're only going to look at the five types of organisms. We're going to look at some of the diseases caused by them, look at normal flora in your gut, very important, and then talk about sterilization, disinfection, and antiseptic. So this is a relatively short um, topic in the fact that we're only doing part of it. Others will be covered in another class. So when we look at it, we're looking at normal flora, bacteria, viruses, um, infectious proteins, which are prions, fungi, and protozoans. We'll also look a little at parasitic worms. Okay, so the first off, a disease is an abnormal structure or function. There's a lot of diseases. Disease has been around for a while. There's a way to deal with it. We're going right to uh, the microbiology of it. Now, in terms of microbiology, you have bacteria, which are very different from viruses. Bacteria are small organisms, can be killed with antibiotics. Viruses are very hard to kill, so that's why it's important that the body just deal with it. Then you have fungi. Fungi is things like athlete's foot. Um, yeast infection is a type of fungi. Protozoan, amoebic dysentery, and algae. Um, that is algae blooms, blue-green bacteria. And we'll also look at worms, okay? So first off, when you look at normal flora, your body has more microorganisms in it than you do body cells. Billions of good bacteria in your gut, and it's important you keep that good bacteria healthy. That's why in yogurt you have your probiotics and your prebiotic bacteria. Um, if you're on any medication for a long time, you can interfere with this bacteria, which will then cause other diseases to occur. Um, an example is if you're on antibiotics for your bad bacteria, say an infection, you will kill your good bacteria, which with lack of good bacteria will result often in yeast infections taking over in either vaginal yeast infections, sometimes in your mouth, sometimes in your armpit. Um, so it's interesting to show that you have this normal flora, very important uh, to cultivate and keep in your gut. Okay, when we look at bacteria, bacteria are single cell. They lack a true nucleus. They're found everywhere. They are basically in three shapes. There we go, three shapes. You've got your cocci, which are round. You've got your bacilli, which are rod-shaped, and your spirochetes, which are um, spiral, okay? All of them have some uh, way of movement. If you look at the staph infection, staphylococcus, uh, sta uh, staphylococcus is your uh, basic disease, hospital disease. It is a bacteria, sorry, it is a uh, circle one, so it's cocci. Now there's something called a gram stain. There's gram positive and gram negative. Gram positive turned purple when a gram stain was on them. It has to do with the outside of the, um, the outside protein case and something called peptidoglycans. I'm only telling you that because I think it's a very cool word. Um, you don't need to know right now the technical dif the difference between a gram positive and a gram negative. Positive turns pink, negative, sorry, positive turn purple, negative turn pink. Um, and that has to do with the type of coat. Also, the type of coat means it is affected a little different by antibiotics. You just need to know they're different right now. One's purple, one's pink. So when you see them, they are, so this one's purple. So streptococcus would be a gram positive bacteria. Okay, bacteria do not have a true nucleus. They do have some mobility uh, found everywhere. Very important in your gut. That's a probacteria um, in probacteria in your gut. Very important. Usually killed off with um, antibiotics. Okay. 
Then when you look at viruses, viruses are extremely small. Rhinovirus, which is the common flu. The flu vaccine has to do with flu viruses. The thing about a virus is they do not have cell components allowing them to replicate themselves. So the virus must attack another type of cell, take over the ribosomes and the material in or the organelles in the cell, which can cause replication. This is one reason why viruses are hard to kill is because they're inside the body cell. Um, and quite often their nucleic acid or DNA may actually be put into the DNA of the host. Difficult to kill, however, they can be treated with vaccines. An example of a virus is um, cold virus, which is the rhinovirus. Rhino is like a nose. Um, then you have HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, which leads to AIDS and um, the, and herpes is a virus. thing about viruses too is they can also be latent, which means they will stay in your body for years and come out later. Herpes virus is a very good one. There's herpes simplex number one, which is cold sores, and number two, which is genital warts. You can have a cold sore in your body and then when your body gets run down, sorry, you have a virus in your body and then when the body gets run down, a cold sore appears. Same thing with um, genital herpes is that it can be passed on because you may be asymptomatic or the person may be asymptomatic. You don't show the signs. You have unprotected sex. The herpes virus is passed on. Then later on it comes out. Okay. That's latent. The person carrying it is called a carrier. Viruses, very simple. And they have to be seen with uh, an electron microscope. Um, Ebola virus, very good example of a virus that is out right now. Okay. Another thing is a prion, and which is an infective protein. The protein comes in and it will change the composition of protein. Again, it's just a protein. It's not even a cell. Um, an example of here is BSE, bovine, spongiform, encephalitis, which is mad cow disease. A um, couple has shown up. Completely destroyed the Alberta beef economy. Okay. Then you've got fungi. Fungi are large, plant, simple plant-like organisms, but they're not plant. These are yeasts and mold. So yeast includes ringworm, um, yeast infections, athlete's foot, uh, a mold disease. Uh, can't think of one right now, but I'm sure it's there. Fuzzy fil filamentous forms of mold. This is uh, affects a lot of food. The food gets moldy. Okay, here's a fungi. Here's yeast. Um, oh, here is thrush, which is a yeast disease. Um, not quite sure what that is. What's B? It's kind of ugly. Let me just check here. It's kind of ugly. Let's look at it. That is oh filamentous fun fungi. And then in C, you've got candida, which is a yeast-like infection, okay? Uh, yeast infections, nasty. Um, can be changed with a fungicide. Good. Next, we're looking at protozoans. Protozoans are animal-like single-celled organisms. And this is amoebic dysentery, ciliates or pyramesiums. Flagellates are used in, sorry, are um, uh, malaria sleeping sicknesses. So they are organisms that get into the body. They will uh, pass on, some of them are passed on by food, some are passed on by uh, a vector. And a vector is an organism that will transfer a, um, disease carrying organism. So the host is the organism that they're in. The parasite is the one that lives inside of it. Okay. Uh, you have protozoan. This is sleeping sickness, malaria, amoebic dysentery, which is uh, often travel as diarrhea. 
Next one, parasitic worms. Um, worms, again, live in the body. You have round worms or pinworms. Trichinella, which is a flatworm that lives in your body. Uh, Filaria. Um, this is the worm that causes elephantitis and it lives inside your um, lymph nodes. And here's an example of it. Your lymph system is a system of vessels similar to your, your circulatory system. They drain the fluid. If these systems get plugged with this worm, you get a case called elephantitis. Not a problem in North America because of our good sanitation. Very much a problem in tropical diseases, I'm sorry, tropical areas because of poor sanitation. Another worm you may have heard of, uh, flatworm, is the tapeworm. Here it shows the tapeworm. It has segments to it, and this is basically a reproductive system. There's also something called a fluke, which is a flatworm that is the one that used to be a problem in uncooked pork, not so much a problem now. Okay, these can be killed. Um, you can take dewormer, um, your dog, you may have had dewormer for your dog, which is roundworms, heartworm, um, just disturbs the digestive system, gets rid of them. In terms of trichinella, which is worms in pork, just cook your pork properly and you shouldn't have a problem. It's a concern with sushi, raw fish, but not so much a, uh, a problem with anything else. Okay. Um, when it comes to controlling, basically control by controlling your sewage, your garbage, purify your water, prevent contamination, and pasteurizing milk. The whole thing with pasteurizing milk is you're heating it up slowly. Often you are heating. Heating will kill most of this stuff. So you can heat, um, dispose of, keep your water and your garbage and your water separate um and then prevent cross contamination with chicken there's cross contamination salmonella bacterial disease okay i just want you to be aware of these to realize that they're not all the same a bacteria is not a virus which is not a fungus and each one because they're different anatomically have to be treated a little different now there are three general ways of being aseptic one is sterilization by putting something in autoclave you're applying great heat pressure and often um, a gas to kill things. It does a good job of killing everything except not spores. So what they usually do is wait a little while and kill the spores uh, again because the spores can erupt. Then there is a disinfectant. Disinfectants do a pretty good job of cleaning most, uh, killing most things. However, they can be harmful to living tissue. That's why an antiseptic comes in. Often an antiseptic will just stun the bacteria growth for a while, will not completely kill it, but will keep the population down enough. Um, antiseptics are able to be used on living tissue. Disinfectants usually cause damage to living tissue, okay? Main um, thing is body precautions and hand washing. We don't really realize disease as a problem because we have good cleaning, drinking water, and we have first aid for most of our cuts. Um, in other, other um, places, that's when you get disease is when your cuts or your incisions get infected. Okay, that's pretty much what I want you to be concerned with. There are different types. Um, this is nasty, sleezing. You cough into your elbow and then you wear your warm elbow. Hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. Um, please realize there's a little more information on a host and a parasite. I just really much want you to pay attention to it. Uh, myco is a fungus word, strepto is chain, septic has to do with poison, and you're an eyed if you kill something. Please know that it's between a bacteria, a virus, and a worm, and that's pretty much it for this unit. You will not have to know specific diseases, but you should be able to give a disease in each of the classification. Thanks!